Six years ago, I stand another podium for Polish mother. I say goodbye to Chou Deng. I never thought one of the days I was standing in the same position to say goodbye to my dear friend, Polly. From the family members, they already talked about how, what kind of person Polly was. Actually, I I'm not that close to Polly in Poughkeepsie, but the first time I heard the chants, I think it's a year, I think it's a 1969, I heard the friend said, the chants, they are renting their second house. Oh my goodness. At that year, all the friends here from IBM Poughkeepsie, they were all young engineers. We all live in the renting apartment. The chance they can rent the second house. We're so envious about that, right? How can we afford to have a, a house and they are renting out? So I, I, at that time, I even didn't know them. I just heard. So later on, I met them in the social gatherings, Mahjong, that's our you know, weekend. Uh, social time, and then, but we are not that close. Until Tommy born, I think. Somehow, <laughs> I like Tom, and the party likes my son, Steve. We joked. I said, maybe we can exchange <laughs> the sons. <laughs> You may say, I don't want your grace. <laughs> uh, the reason I brought up that is, you know, I think actually in Poughkeepsie, we are not that close. We became a close friend since we moved to Bay Area. We both, you know, my husband and the girls, we left, uh, they left the IBM. We moved to uh, Bay Area at that time. That's in the year 81. California school at that period of time, their enrollment is increasing. They close a lot of schools. And then you know, uh, they talked earlier, uh, uh, Polly was a librarian. She worked at a school, a public school. So it's very hard to find a school. That's why Polly started her luncheon business. I think most of you know that. And that it was a period of time, very, very hard work for her. But she got the support from the kids. Even at that time, I think Tilly and Tom are still high school kids, or even uh, I think Tom maybe is still in junior high. But uh, we, at that time, we went to, I think, 89, we went to back to Taiwan. Whenever I came back, I went to her place in the mall. I saw Tilly and Tom. And the girl was in Hong Kong at that time. So she, you know, took this business by herself. She's so strong, and she never complains. Polly is the core of their family. She loved her, you know, her husband, of course, and uh, every member in her family now is three generations. Okay. And uh, when she had the breast cancer, and at that time, I myself is a cancer survivor. So, and also I, I'm a, Cancer Society is a volunteer, so we talked a lot about the treatment, and I understand what the cancer patient went through. So we talked a lot about the things, and I, because of I, I'm a, I was, I'm a volunteer in the Cancer Society, so I know a lot about oncologists. 
So a lot, sometimes we got some consultant and they give some suggestions. I'm sorry, Polly. When you need me, in year 2011, you had the recurrence of your cancer. The next year, I moved to San Diego. But, uh, you know, we always have a, a telephone conversations. Whenever, I think every week, we talk. It is hard to tell her, like, don't worry, fighting, you have a spirit. It is not easy when you are in that position, okay? Fighting cancer is not an easy way. How much we went through, if you didn't, you know, experience that, nobody would understand. So she, you know, did her best and got all the treatment she had, but we didn't save her. Thank you, Polly. You gave me the chance to see you when I came back uh, to about uh, 10 days ago or two weeks ago. When I rushed to your home after I arrived that Tuesday, I never expect to see her like that. Even I know her condition is very, very serious. That was the first time when I left her house and got home, I cried for the first time. Because I know we cannot save her. But I, when, at that day, she was not so comfortable. But I thank you, Polly. You gave me the last view of you when I went to your place Thursday morning around noon time. She lied on her husband's bed. She's so calm. We talked, no, she didn't answer, of course. She, she's very, very weak because she already cannot take in anything. And I pet her. We didn't talk much, but she knows I was there. When I left, the last view, when I saw her, she's really just sleeping. So I want to remember, she's in sleeping, she's not gone yet. When we measure our life, we can measure by length <coughs> and by width. I talked to Tilly about that the other day we were preparing for this service. I said, yes, Polly, she left us, she should stay longer. We're talking about the length of the life. She's, you know, she needs more time. She can live longer. Regret she didn't have longer time for living. But if we measure, with the width, she's much, she had her life much wider than most of us because she had all the love from her, the one who loved him, her. So, Polly, someday you will say, because Polly always goes, Grisha, Grisha. Polly? Someday you will say, Grisha, you like that? Yes, I will come to find you. Thank you. Hi,子们, 各位来宾，我是叶静英，我是裘品正的同学。一九五四年，我们一同进入北北一女。一九六四年，我们从台大外文系毕业。我认识九品正是从
在所有外文系的同学会中，印象最深的是二零一一年十月二十号，我们有两位同学表演国标舞。那天邱炳正打扮得非常的漂亮，维春也打了领带，他们。见吗？他们两位也在舞池中跳舞，跳得非常的开心。所以我看见他们的时候，想到他们年轻的时候，恐怕就已经熟悉这个玩意儿。两个星期以后，我在一次谈话中，我发现秉正的情绪比较忧伤，想起他的快乐。又如今看见他忧伤，使我想起一首圣歌：生活是死亡，是欢笑，是哭泣；生活是爱情，是真诚；生活是在主内，爱的呼声。品正生病以后，他是体验到了真实的人生。在他忧伤的时候，似乎我们的言谈都是在低潮中打转，可是我可以看见，他还是保守了基督徒的盼望。就如保罗所说：“无论是死亡还是生活，我们都不会与天主的爱相隔绝。”那年。二零一一年十一月中旬，我陪着他到 Saint Louis o p i t a l 去请一位我们的神父为他祈祷。那天，维春开着车子，我看见五号公路两旁层层的山丘，我忍不住唱出“跌跌惊山寒碧”。弯弯溪水流情，平镇跟着我，附和我，唱着。那天他是他六十八岁的生日。平镇生病以后，从不抱怨，似乎人世间不美满的事情，在他的眼光都看得毫不重要，只有生。只有生命生存才是可贵的。在我多少次跟他在电话中的言谈中，他表达了他对生命的不舍，他对他的孩子们，看见他的孩子们那么努力的孝顺他，使得他说他多么的心痛。五月二十九号下午，下午五点半。秉正打电话给我，他告诉我说：“如果有什么事情发生在他的身上，请我回头向我的同学们说一声。”在他跟我的谈话中，我意识到他的病可能加重了，使我有点感觉他好像在跟我报告别。在他的不舍中，他没有忘记过同学，为同学们做安排。品正的为人，就如同他的名字，品格端正。他的言谈不多，可是他说的都是真理。我从北一女的时代就跟他一起，互相看着我们长大，直到我们进入老年。今天，我代表我台大外文系的同学，送品正最后一程。在同学们的眼中，在他们的心目中，品正永远是那个五十三年以前那一位笑容满面、头发整齐、身健康、身。爸爸，你好，张。哈哈哈哈哈。可以了吗？
，好，远一点试试看哈。品格健康，抱着书在文学院里走动，在文学里出入的那一位好女学生，如今她离开我们，先去了。让同学们不甚唏嘘，品证，请安息，在天国里没有痛病痛，只有永生。谢谢大家。老朋友，我们的组内姐妹哈利说再见。我们心中有伤感和惋惜，也有希望跟感恩，知道他离开了。这个繁杂劳碌的世界，来到上帝的怀中，与主同在，那里不再有疾病、痛苦和眼泪。五十年以前，我们就认识了哈利，那个时候我们都是二十几岁的大学生，参加台大附近的一个呃基督徒的学生团契，叫做 f r e n c h i p Corner。我们每个礼拜天的晚上有聚会，这个聚会当中啊啊，我们在那里唱诗，在那里祷告、听到、读经、分享啊。当时的大学生活啊，每个礼拜天晚上是我们的 highlight， 是我们非常兴奋的时候。有时候我们也一块出去啊，郊游、吃饭、谈天。赛球，其乐无穷。使我们在那个机会能够认识上帝，能够坚定我们的信仰，能够了解人生的意义，更是交到了很多的朋友。有的呢是由友友情进入爱情，最后进入婚姻。啊，今天啊 ，Polly 和啊。Gus 他们这一对，就是在 f r e n c h i p s h i p Corner 成功的一对。那我跟我的太太也是在那里成功的。那，呃，在那个时候，我们对哈利就有很深的印象啊。他是一位善良、真诚、很热心的一位、啊、好朋友。那是五十年以前的事情。在整整的一个月以前的今天，啊 ，Polly 跟 Gus 邀请了啊好几位朋友去他家聚集。那天呢，当中大多数也都是 f r e n c h Corner 的啊老朋友，很难得啊几十年不见面，大家相见啊非常高兴。那天呢，总共有十一个大人。哎，那时候我们啊知道 Polly 的情况，啊，我们就说，哎、啊，我们应该出去外面吃饭，这是我们的计划。结果我们到了他们家以后呢，就发现、啊、，Polly 已经预备了一大桌的菜饭在那儿，啊，包括他最拿手的这个，啊，烤这个 spare ribs， 啊，还教我们啊应该怎么样烤法。他花了很多的时间，很多的精力，准备了很多的好吃的东西，让我们过意不去。啊，后来发现这个就是他的 style。他平常说话不多啊，那天呢，他跑来跑去就是做事情，也没说多少话。后来我们快要离开的时候，啊，他说了几句话。啊，他的话不多啊，但是都很重要。啊，他说我已经预备好了，他已经预备好了。啊，他心里有喜乐，有平安，在这么困难的情况之下，啊，他能够有这样的态度，他预备好了。他说他最大的愿望是能够活过七十岁，那这个目的他已经达到了。他有一个温暖的家，是他极大的。家庭对他非常的重要。然后他说，他也愿意继续按照医生嘱咐他的事情去做，啊，所以在这里我们看到他另外的一面，他的坚强，他的沉稳。
他的满足和顺服。他是一个这样的人。哈利会继续留在我们的心中。作为一个基督徒，我们也知道，有一天我们要跟哈利见面，是在一个更好的地方见